Right. So since we have seen many times these types of uh, questions, so we will go a little bit uh, faster here. Okay, so consider the following reaction. So some sort of a metal carbonate maybe uh, is a uh, hydrated metal carbonate is decomposed here. This reaction is given and this uh, metal carbonate uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, reversibly undergoes this reaction giving the oxide and CO2. So we'll discuss about the description. So a small amount of uh, small amount. So they have given this is a uh, 0.1 mole. So they have used 0.1 mole of this. It's present in an evacuated rigid container. Okay, so they have given the volume as well. The temperature of the container was uh, raised to 400 and the metal carbonate does not decompose at this temperature. So this reaction does not happen at this temperature 400 Kelvin. But the crystalline water evaporates. So this water is evaporated. So basically this reaction happens here at 400 Kelvin, but this reaction does not happen. And the pressure of the container was uh, measured to be 1.6 to the power four here. And the volume occupied by the solid is negligible. Okay. So determine the value of N in the formula. Mm, okay, so you have to find N here. So, these reactions happens right at 400 Kelvin. And at this temperature, you know the volume as well. And they have given a pressure. So think about the compounds that is present here at this temperature. So you will have this some amount of this metal carbonate and the decomposed, maybe there will be some compound. This is, this is completely decomposed. So you will have this and this. So out of these two compounds, this amount of pressure is going to be given by water. So this is directly partial pressure of water because there are no other gaseous products here, right? So if this is partial pressure of water at this temperature and at this volume, you can find the next step, that is number of moles of water that is going to be liberated, right? So try to find that. So you can apply uh, PVC equal to NRT, and so you can find uh, NH2O here. So NH2O will be like, okay, so 1.6 into uh, 10 to the power of four here. And volume is uh, 0 0.08314. And R is again 8.314, so it is nice here. And temperature is 400 Kelvin. So everything is nice. So you can cut this to this one. So there will be a 10 to the power minus two. Uh, so this will be 10 to the power minus two. So you can cancel this one and this one. So there will be 10 to the power two here. So you can cancel this one and this one. So it's basically 1.6 over four, which you can write uh, 16 over 40 which is uh, four here and one here. So it is 4 divided by 10 means 0 0.4 moles. Okay. So what you can conclude here is from 0 0.1 moles of this uh, hydrated carbonate, you get 0 0.4 moles of water. Okay. So you can directly write on stoichiometry between the hydrated carbonate and uh, the uh, water that is liberated. If this is one here and this is N, which means if you have used like uh, 0 0.1 in this case, so in this case 0 0.1, you have obtained 0 0.4, right? So you have obtained uh, 0 0.4 basically, which uh, gives you the idea, the 
stoichiometric ratio is going to be equal to the molar ratio. So you get here n is equal to four. So that is your answer. So you easily find n is equal to four. So what I have done, first identify this pressure is directly from water, then find the number of moles. So if you find the number of moles, so this is one needs to n. So one needs to n is equal to 0 0.1 is to 0 0.4 because from 0 0.1 mole of this metal, uh, metal hydride carbonate, you get 0 0.4 moles of water. So based on the stoichiometry, you can find n is equal to four. So that is part A, very simple one, right? Right, so we'll move on to the second one. The temperature of the above system was then increased to 800 Kelvin, which is good. And it was observed that some amount of the solid metal carbonate is still decomposed. Okay, so this is decomposed. Now this reaction is also going to happen here at 800 Kelvin. And it is in equilibrium with the gas phase, okay. The pressure of the container was measured to be 4.2 into 10 to the power of 4. So at this temperature at 800 Kelvin, what you observe here, you observe this both reaction. Sorry, but what is the difference with this pressure here? Now here, what you have to understand here, this pressure that is exerted comes from both water as well as CO2. <coughs> Sorry. So this 4.2 into 10 to the power of 4 Pascal is both from carbon dioxide and from water, okay? So this is not the case where the initial temperature was 400, where only water is present, right? So what are the questions? Calculate the partial pressure of water vapor in the container at 800 Kelvin. So again, it's very similar. So what is the change that you see here uh, in the first reaction, apart from the condition that is used here? The only thing that I see here is the temperature is double, okay? So if you know at constant volume, what is actually happening when you double the temperature, it is straightforward. You don't even try to calculate using equations because the same amount of water will be there, but at different temperature, think about this, this pressure will be different. Okay, so here the volume is same. So you can mention here, since the temperature is double, the pressure that is here as 1.16 to 10 to the power of four Pascal will be double here. Two times here for partial pressure of water. Because same amount of water molecules, 0.4 molecules will be formed here. So even if you try to use PV is equal to NRT and try to show that this pressure is P and volume is 0 0.08314 and your number of moles is 0 0.4, R is 8.314 and temperature is uh, 800 now. So what is the difference here and here? The only difference here is your temperature is double here. So basically your pressure here is going to be double. So what is the new pressure? It will be 3.2 into 10 to the power four Pascal. 
okay but if you are clever enough you don't even to show this calculation you just have to mention the temperature is double so nothing change the amount of moles just the temperature is double so the pressure should be double okay so if you find this water pressure as uh, 3.2 into 10 to the power 4 pascal automatically you're finding the pressure of carbon dioxide because here we see the total pressure so 4.2 minus 3.2 so it is 1 into 10 to the power 4 pascal uh, for co2 so that becomes very straightforward so this is done and this is done write an expression for the pressure equilibrium constant kp so these are very similar simple now because here you see here uh, the equilibrium is only for this particular reaction this is not an equilibrium reaction so you need to write down uh, the kp expression that is just a uh, partial pressure of uh, co2 gas to the power 2 that's it so you know the partial pressure here there is 1 into 10 to the power 4 so you can directly uh, get the uh, KP equilibrium, so it will be very easy for you to get. Okay, so this is also done. Calculate the molar percentage of the metal carbonate at uh, the, deco at the uh, decomposed at uh, 800 Kelvin. Okay, so how do you do that? You need to get the molar percentage. So what is the easiest way to do that? Because you know the partial pressure of um, CO2, right? Because you have to get the molar percentage of this one. So you know the amount of CO2 based on its partial pressure. So if you know the partial pressure and you know all other things, the temperature, the volume, so temperature is 800 Kelvin, and you know the volume so what you can calculate is you can calculate the number of moles of co2 right then you see here the stoichiometry of co2 is 2 is to 1 with the metal carbonate so if you find the amount of co2 in fact here the amount of co2 that is formed is 0 0.125 that is from the answer script i directly take so this was 0. Uh, one two five so the amount that is decomposed here is 0 0.0625 if i am not mistaken okay so this is the number of moles that this is given out but don't forget this mco3 twice comes from here so the same 0 0.1 should be here initially so you can calculate the molar percentage of the metal carbonate decomposed. So the decomposed amount is, uh, this will be the amount that is going to be uh, uh, remain here because this amount of 0 0.0625 of metal carbonate would give you this amount of uh, CO2 to show that sort of uh, partial pressure. So in your equation, there will be 0 0.0625 moles on the top. And in the bottom, you will divide that by 0 0.1, which is the initial total amount of the carbonate. And then you multiply it by 100. So basically 0 0.0625 divided by 0 0.1 into 100. So you will get a percentage around 62.5. Okay, so that's it. The enthalpy change for the decomposition of the metal carbonate under the above condition is 40 kilojoule. So calculate the corresponding entropy change. So I also told you, so this decomposition at the equilibrium, so your delta G will be zero. So basically in our equation where delta G is equal to delta H uh, minus uh, T delta S. So this would become zero. So basically T delta S is equal to delta H. So if you want to find delta S, uh, you should directly divide this delta H from the particular given temperature. So you have the delta H value and you know the temperature, which is uh, 800 Kelvin here. 
So you just have to divide uh, it by the, uh, 800, the enthalpy value. But uh, it is normally we present this uh, entropy in not in kilojoules, so in joules. So it is better if you keep the final answer in joules. It doesn't matter, but it's better to keep that in uh, joules. And finally, suggest two ways to drive the decomposition uh, reaction uh, in CO3 solid in the forward direction. So what you can do here first, uh, it's very simply, if you remove some amount of carbon dioxide from the system, so they have to increase the pressure to maintain this Kp value. So this forward reaction will favor. So that is one thing that you can do. You can um, remove some amount of uh, carbon dioxide. That is one thing. And uh, the other thing is uh, what you can do here is you see here the decomposition of the metal carbonate is uh, the enthalpy that is given here is uh, positive, right? So in here, the forward reaction is a cooling process and the backward reaction is a heating process, okay? So you should increase the temperature in order to favor the cooling process. So there will be more, 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 more decomposition if you heat the mixture. So the second thing that you can do here is increase the temperature because you see here the forward reaction is in the thermal. I hope you understood that. So that is the way that you can do. Okay, so this is a very nice informative question, I would say. Information, a lot of information that you can get. Right, so then we go to the thermodynamics. So these are very, very uh, straightforward things. So with the aid of thermochemical cycles and the data given in the table, so answer the following questions. So you have given the formation enthalpy for M solid, it is zero, M gas, which is solid, uh, will be converted to gas like the, <coughs> you would say sublimation and then uh, oxygen is molecule oxygen is naturally present as O2. So there will be no uh, standard formation enthalpy, but from O2 to O, so this is a bond dissociation enthalpy of 249. And then the formation of MO2. So if I write down the formation of uh, MO2 here, so it is will be basically from M uh, solid, which is the natural state plus O2 gas, which is the natural condition, and it will form MO2 gas. So this enthalpy is minus 400. So it is also given. Okay. So these are very nice reactions. So given that MO plus half O2 gives you MO2 gas. So actually, even though this formation we think is coming from M plus O2 gas giving MO2 gas, because this is the natural form of M solid and this is the natural form of O2 gas. So natural existing one. But they say this MO2 is formed from a different reaction that they have given here. And the Delta H for this particular reaction is also given, this is minus 50. Calculate the standard enthalpy of formation of MO. So this is what you have to find. You have to uh, find the standard enthalpy of formation for MO. So how do you find that? That is the question that we have to answer. So we have to use a thermochemical cycle. So what is the advantage of uh, having this uh, formation enthalpy of MO2 is you know that if there is MO2 here with M with M, uh, M with O2 here you can obtain MO2 because we have going to you know the enthalpy here so our product MO2 is here right so if I draw an enthalpy thermochemical cycle like this, so I have MO plus half CO, half O2, sorry. 
giving MO2, so that is done. So I, I know the enthalpy for this particular reaction. And I can draw this one, right? So if I just put here M solid plus uh, O2 here, that gives you MO2 here like this. So I know this one as minus 400 for an example. So what is this reaction then? So what is this reaction here? It is directly the formation of uh, MO here from M solid and uh, O2 gas here. And additionally, you have the half uh, CO2 there. Right? So that is the reaction, this reaction, the MO plus half O2 will give MO2 that is already given here, that is minus 50. So this would be minus 50, right? And you even know minus 400, right? So the only thing that you don't know here is the formation enthalpy here. which is going to be the formation enthalpy of MO. Right? So then you can use the Hess's law for this particular thermochemical cycle. And you can find the formation enthalpy for this uh, MO because formation enthalpy of MO is going to be this one, okay? That is uh, not hard. You just need to write down the reaction. So here it will be delta H theta formation of MO plus uh, minus 50 will be equal to minus 400. So you can send this minus 50 to the other side. So it will be delta H theta formation of MO will be minus 350 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so that is the easiest way to do that one uh, because there is no other way to, simple way to do that. And the second one is calculate MO bond dissociation enthalpy in MO gas, right? So if you have this particular reaction, like for an example, uh, we would say, let's say we have like this MO uh, gas, which is going to give you uh, M plus O gas, M gas plus O gas. So this is the bond dissociation of MO gas, right? Calculate MO bond dissociation. So this is the bond dissociation. So I would write here. Uh, delta H theta is BD of MO, okay? So you know how you can uh, obtain these two from the beginning. For an example, we know the MO formation enthalpy using the above cycle. And we know if you have the M solid here, how do you convert that to M gas? Because this is already given here, 800. And you know, if you have O2 here, for an example, half O2 here, you know how you obtain this bond dissociation enthalpy. It is given already here, 249.2, right? So everything is given. So the only thing that you need to find here is the unknown thing. So this is the formation of uh, MO which was uh, 350, we already found that here using this one. And this is given, this is 800, right? And this is also given, so this is just the bond dissociation, you got only one oxygen here. So this will be uh, 249.2 here. There is uh, no problem in that one. 
and the only thing that you don't know is this right so it's very simple okay and when you do this summation uh, you will get a uh, answer for that one very very easily And the next one, calculate MO bond dissociation enthalpy in MO2. So it is very similar to this one. So what you have to do is you have to just write down in uh, O2 and you get the bond dissociation enthalpy again M gas plus uh, O gas. But don't forget here now it is two O gas, not one O gas which means the only difference that is going to happen here is when you add these reactants like uh, M solid plus uh, O2 gas here. So this will be the formation enthalpy for MO2, which is uh, 400 here, it is given. Okay. And uh, this will be same here. So this will be 800. But here it's two oxygen formation, not just the one oxygen. So here it will be 249.2 times two. So the only thing that you don't know is this one, delta H T F. Okay, so these are very simple things, not the hard ones, okay? Because all the informations are given. You just want to manipulate the reaction that is given by adding some reactant which are common to the reaction right so that is what you have to do so these are very simple things by means of a suitable calculation predict whether the reaction uh, mo2 gas to mo gas and half o2 is spontaneous under standard conditions and uh, 2000 kelvin the standard entropy change for this reaction is 30 kilojoule, uh, 30 joule per Kelvin per mole. So what is the relationship between this reaction and this reaction? Because I see this is this uh, formation of MO2 and this is just uh, the reverse process, right? So what do you get from that? Uh, idea that is the idea that you have to get from the message that is given here if this is the forward process that is the formation of mo2 which is the same reaction that is given in the reverse so if this enthalpy is negative here surely for this reaction this enthalpy is positive 50 right then you know our equation, which is delta G is equal to uh, delta H minus T delta S. So delta H here is 50, but don't forget, now this is positive. So you can put this in a kilojoule per mole for here. Then minus temperature is uh, 2000 Kelvin times the entropy is 30 kilojoule, 30 joules. So you can convert this into 10 to the power minus three uh, in order to make this uh, in kilojoules, all the units, right? So this one and these zeros will be canceling out. So there is a 60 here. And then you do the calculation 50 minus 60, you will get minus 10 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so this is done. So if you really want to get through this again, so please go through this uh, explanation again and try to understand the concepts uh, because uh, this is also a little bit of informative for you guys, I would say. Okay, so I'm done with this part also. So that is very simple now.